tape. <coughs> and if we on the gel, oops. On the gel this time if we have a RNA uh, and then we do a, a probe. We have probes. It could be DNA probe too. And what will this be called? Um, And this time we have the gel of the protein. We have the protein on the gel. And then we use the probe again to hybridize. Which, what will this be called? Transfer DNA. Uh, when we do the what, what's called blood, blood is basically transferring the gel to something a membrane. So, so for the for the DNA, RNA, all protein, they all need to be transferred to some kind of membrane. So. They all need to be transferred into the membrane. So by this process will be called blotting. Right? So, but do that called a blotting process. So DNA, RNA, protein, they all need to be transferred from the gel into a 
memory. That would be basically more sturdy stuff to do. Uh, labeling of uh, blotting, shaking. The gel is usually like a gel. It, it's hard to manipulate it. The gel, if you put it the iris gel, remember that that's jello, right? So if we shake it, it looks like it will be break. Be broken. So we need to transfer all those into the membrane. And that process is called blotting. <coughs> Not process is a lot. But there will be uh, various ways of blocking called northern block, western block, southern block. Those are the three most common ones. There's also a very obscure version called eastern block, but that's kind of a <coughs> not many people using it. But the most common one will be Southern, Western, and Northern block. And that would be there. Which one do you think is the Southern block? Mm. What does Wikipedia say? <laughs> yes. uh, so if you found out what Wikipedia say about Southern block, and uh, the the opposite not opposite the counterpart of that would be northern part. And then the the one which is different from that the northern and southern should be the western part. So the DNA one is a southern block. And so the RNA has to be northern block. That's right. And then I guess protein is western block. That's right. So w when did you ever use the eastern block? Eastern block, uh, if you Google, Wikipedia, Eastern Block gave you a very, uh, something called post uh, modification. Uh, and uh, I really, it's not very common to even use that Eastern Block more. Uh, I guess we have to have it since we already have three directions we need to put. <laughs> uh, <coughs> in fact, they are even say something called Northeastern Block. <laughs> so, <laughs> when people so, try to, to do this uh, 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 more uh, advanced uh, uh, yeah. so, <coughs> so uh, Eastern blocks will be uh, similar to Western but except, except we are trying to find out what's the post-translational modification of protein that's what the Wikipedia said I, I guess that's if, if that probably is the exact the term for it. But it's not very commonly used. Uh, a, a little jargon compared to the other three. But southern blood, why is it called southern blood? Ah, you had the iPhone, okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, this, the, per, the first person who, who, who uh, well, invented this happened to have a last name called Southern. <laughs> and since we are, we are doing, we are transferring DNA into membrane, see how the DNA uh, uh, works, and then we can do the similar thing for RNA, and people say, well, this is called Southern blood, we may call that oh, Northern wow. blood. <laughs> and then, well, we have a DNA, RNA, and then we have protein here, right? So, so basically, this is a DNA blood. That's the RNA block. That's the protein block. And this will be the protein modification block. Protein modification block. Right, so here yeah, we have the north. North usually is something called this. Uh, uh, I forgot which one is black, which. <laughs> you know, North is there, <laughs> so yeah. So northern block for RNA, western block for protein, DNA block for southern uh, block, uh, protein modification, eastern block. So <coughs> and
Okay. So, how do we do the? Uh, I guess we uh, we are doing Western blood today. So, if we focus on the Western blood, uh, the Western blood you uh, done after SDS page gel. The SDS page gel is basically well, just like this. So this will be a protein ladder, and then we have protein samples loaded on each well. And this is called a uh, page gel. Uh, poly. I put my gel in that for this. Is, uh, poly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. But the, the protein have what kind of charge here? Um, positive. Because of the SDS. Yes, they are highly negative. Oh, and then they move right, towards yeah, the positive. Yeah. So the protein, they are all highly negative. Uh, oh, yeah. And the smaller protein should move faster. Right? And larger protein should move uh, slow. Oh. Right? So, so the smaller protein at the bottom, larger protein at the top. And they are separated by the side, basically electronic charges. Uh, OK. Uh, up, so then we separate this, all the protein are negatively charged, but how do we transfer from the gel to the membrane? If you picture all the protein are neg negatively charged. You take something that has a positive charge. Yeah, so positive charge that should be at the top. And we put the, the positive charge at the top and the negative charge at the bottom. And then we will move the protein from the gel to the membrane. And that's the setup in the back should be doing now. So, so there's a transfer box here. It's say high voltage, do not touch. Uh, <laughs> Where is Dr. Kiyaku? Am I? He will show, <laughs> Jesus will show up when we are you should pray him in the <laughs> Okay, so so they should uh, positive. This is positive. The red should be positive. Ne uh, black should be negative. So in fact, you are you are actually transferring one, two, three gel all together. So the negative here, the membrane, uh, the membrane should be on the positive side of the gel. The gel should be on on the negative the side. And in fact, uh, the field is actually transferring three gel all together. So. So he, he had the setup like this. So he had a one gel, uh, two gel, and one gel, three gel, and all the gel uh, have protein. So all the gel uh, have the protein should, should already be separated like based on the uh, uh, electronic charge, and then he had the he should have the membrane separate. Put it here, membrane, a membrane here. So those are the membranes. The black is the gel. And then the, the positive side should be here. The negative side will be here. And the protein transfer is going this direction. So he actually transferring all three gel at the same time. So, so this is a transferring. Yeah, so in, in that uh, transferring setup, all three gel on the, since uh, you have a five, uh, last section has six groups, so each gel have two groups, and three gel they are moving to the positive side. So this, that's the transferring process. And, 
uh, and when loading the gel, uh, I think you should have enough of 20 microliters. Maybe you should check it. Oh, you are pulling the gel now. Oh, where the gel? Yeah, oh, you are in the fridge? No. Okay, are they going to uh, are they going to set up a thing or not to set up? But they are going to they are going to watch it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Pio Co is going to set up the gel now. So I guess we can see. So this is one of the protein gel. It's a precast. So precast is a gel. Those are the cones. Cones are the top. So each cone, when we slowly pull out, should have a well. And so that's a very uh, thin cone. So when we pull it out, we, we need to use a, a needle-like uh, a tip to, to add sample into the well. Each gel can a two group can run on one one gel. Okay, that's first. Yeah, that's first. Uh, uh, those are the samples we, we let them thaw. Uh, while pulling the gel, the sample will, uh, will thaw. And then we can. Yeah, they are yeah. So. Oh. Why are we doing this? <laughs> okay. I, uh, okay. Why? Why are we doing all those plot? Uh, we all we for protein gel we separate by size. For DNA gel, we also separate by size. For RNA gel, we also separate basically to identify it. We separate by uh, by all uh, by protein by size, and then we will use specific probe to see which band will light up. So like, basically identifying the DNA sequence. For DNA, yes. For protein, we identify which protein oh. use antibody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. For the protein, we use antibody as a probe. For RNA and protein, we can use either DNA or RNA as a probe. So the DNA and RNA probe will use complementation. The only, only specific sequence will be hybridized. For the protein, the antibody usually is specific. It only binds to uh, the kind of protein we want to bind. So those are the, you, you want to see, uh, uh, in, in our case, we have the neutron protein should have a a size we calculate, and we can see whether it is or not. And the intensity of that signal should be proportional to the amount of protein in the sample. Right, so in the wild type, if we have the wild type of mutant, we both hybridize to the same probe, and the strength of the signal should be proportional to the, the, the amount of that protein in the isolate. And that tells us whether the mutation has a a higher expression level or low expression level compared to the wild type. Of course, the vector should have zero. That's my. That's our black control. The vector should have zero expression on my Yes. In, in fact, we are. Uh, the antibody we use is called HA antibody. That's because the mRNA two we express has the HA tag in the middle. So that's a commercial available antibody. So it's very, it's highly specific. So after we, that's called, uh, we, we first use a primary, 
So actually, antibody that's called primary antibody. Not primary antibody binds to the MSH2, but we actually cannot see protein. Human eye cannot see protein, which is the nanometer level. We need to see light, something bright, but protein itself doesn't do that. So actually, we have to use a secondary antibody, usually uh, linked to uh, uh, either enzyme or a fluorophore, which emit change the signal into a light or color we can see for detection. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes we can also use uh, radioactivity, but I guess in a teaching lab we don't want to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> you, if you don't want to include, use the uh, secondary antibody, you can use radioactivity directly linked to the primary antibody. That's also another way to do it. But usually we want to avoid that. What is HA? What is HA? Antibody. No. Uh, antibody, antibody. HA is a type of uh, something. Yeah. HA uh, No, that's that's not a country word. It's it's a very specific uh, antigen. Uh, I I always have trouble. I'm not. Uh, Okay. It's a, yeah, it's a very awkward word to pronounce. Yeah. It's, it's basically one of the real uh, antigen. We usually don't find it anywhere except uh, that's the very unique protein sequences. It, you, we won't even find it in most of the cells. So we can put that as a tag, as a signal. Put it into any protein we want to highlight and then we can antibody against HA and highlight that protein. Uh, this is because this protein came from a virus. And that sequence seems to be very specific to that virus and that is not found in human, yeast, or most other eukaryotic species. So, so that's a very unique and also strong signal. Yeah. Poly acrylamide gel electrophoresis. Yeah. No, that's a gel. Uh, that's gel. Yeah, yeah. Like agarose gel. Uh, this is poly gel electrophoresis. Uh, okay. So the pure code is poly acrylamide gel electrophoresis. Yeah. SPS is the detergent. Uh, we would probably should gather around and see how that is. Yeah, so that's the upper running button. Uh, 